Welcome to Peculiar Stories, where we explore the fascinating world of near-death experiences and offer new perspectives on the meaning of life and death. Our goal is to shed light on these profound stories, deepen your understanding of life, and provide valuable insights to our audience. Whether you're new here or simply joining us again, we're thrilled to have you on this journey. If you enjoy what we do, consider subscribing to our channel to stay updated on our latest content, and don't forget to hit the like button to help our content reach a wider audience. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be transported to the edge of life and beyond. On today's story, Kimberly claims she was surrounded by shadowy figures and heard a voice that held an enormous amount of authority. Without further ado, let's get to the story. My name is Kimberly Parker, and this is my story. I was shot on May 8, 1982 at the age of 12. I was shot in the right chest at 4 feet range with a 410 gauge shotgun. The reason I was shot is that a 17-year-old, who was renting a room from the woman whose daughter I was staying the night with, wanted something from this 12-year-old I was not prepared to give. When I fought him, it angered him, and the shooting was a result. When I was shot, I got up and walked out of the house and into the yard to sit down in Miss Jean's car, the friend's mother, who was washing it at the time and had a look of sheer horror on her face when she saw me. I told her to call my daddy because Bobby Joe had just shot me. I sat down in the back seat and waited for the ambulance. When the ambulance arrived, they rushed me to the next town, the nearest hospital, where they told my daddy I would never survive life flight because I had lost too much blood. Needless to say, if you knew my daddy, you would understand why. They put me on life flight and flew me to Herman Hospital in Houston. I had never once lost consciousness or went into shock which amazed everyone. I can still remember everything in perfect detail. As the helicopter landed, I did begin to feel sleepy. They told me not to go to sleep and began running with me down the long hallway in the hospital. I remember counting the lights on the ceiling as they whizzed by to stay awake. They said, even though they were running with the gurney, which was soaked through with blood, that there was still a trail of blood on the floor all the way down the hall. They took me into the operating room, and began to prepare me for surgery. The last thing I remember was the nurse putting a mask over my face and telling me to count backwards from ten. The last number I remember was eight. I then felt like I was walking backwards with my eyes closed. Then it felt like I bumped into a wall with my back. I opened my eyes to a very bright, although strangely not blinding, white, misty light that covered everything. Slowly the mist started to move away, and I saw myself lying on the operating room table, it looked like I was many, many stories high and looking down on myself. I saw them working on me and then I noticed I heard, but not with my ears, more like with my spirit. Something like singing, or voices speaking, but I couldn't make out any words. It was all around me. At this point, I turned around and that's when I saw the tunnel. It was like the inside of a tornado. It was sucking the light and mist into it at what appeared to be warp speed. I had a feeling of total peace all throughout this experience. I started toward the tunnel in a motion, not like walking, more like floating. It seemed like as soon as I entered the tunnel I was on the other side, that quick. I noticed the same bright light and mistiness of the surroundings. I also noticed I wasn't alone. There were dozens of people standing in a horseshoe type formation of which I was standing in the center of when I exited the tunnel. I could not recognize anyone because I saw no features. They were more like figures in shadow. Then I was told no by a voice. Strange thing is that it was neither male nor female, but it held an enormous amount of authority. Then I, with my stubbornness that I carry to this day, asked it, why can't I come home? I was promptly told, you cannot come home yet. I continued to try to go forward, and it kept telling me no, not yet, it is not your time. I then felt compelled to turn and look back at the tunnel. That was when I was transported back through and out the other side of it. I looked down, and that's when I saw them bringing that paddle machine over to my body. I saw the doctor grab the paddles, say something to the person standing next to it. They turned some knobs, and the doctor put them on my chest and hit me once with the shock. I saw my body jump, but I felt nothing. I then saw the doctor say something to them again. They moved the knobs again, and he hit me a second time. Nothing. Then I saw the doctor put the paddles together for a moment as if saying a prayer, and then said something to the person again. The person shook their head in disagreement, but went ahead at the doctor's insistence and moved the knobs again. When he hit me the third time, I awoke in the intensive care unit. The doctor told my parents that I had died. 
I was what they call sheet-faced, and he took a chance by hitting me with the paddles a third time. He admitted to not being a really religious man, but he said he felt he was being told not to quit, so he didn't. I was expected to be in the hospital for at least two months, but was home in ten days. I was called a miracle child on TV and in the papers. I would not trade that experience for anything in the world. Many things have been happening to me since, though. Before that, I was able to see, smell, and feel spirits. I grew up in a haunted house. Since I have had the NDE, I seem to have several psychic gifts as well. I still have all the abilities with spirits, only stronger now. And I have dreams that come true very often. And also, I have very strong gut feelings that I can decipher as good or bad. I can also seem to sense other people's spirits as well. I think the Bible refers to this as the gift called deciphering of spirits. I was made to feel like I was crazy when I would try to speak to my family about the things that I was feeling at that time and about my NDE, so I subdued everything for many years. I have finally got friends and some family who are now encouraging me to work with my gifts again. Okay, here goes the dream part of the NDE. The reason I say dream part is that it seems to have taken place between the NDE and me waking up in the intensive care unit. The dream began with me walking down my street, where I lived at that time, and it was night. I noticed two things. First was I was barefooted, I always was as a kid, and second that I was the only living thing around. What I mean by this is that there were no birds, insects, animals, people, or even wind. There were cars stopped in the street running as if people just stopped and got out and homes were lit up as if people were there but no one was. It was as if I were the only living thing on the planet. I went up to the porch and entered my home to look for my parents, brother and sister, and found no one at all, although lights and TVs were going like they were there. When I found no one home, I got a little scared and left the house to walk next door to my mamo's house to see if they were there. As I walked through my front yard, it felt like something was biting and scratching at my feet. This feeling was so strong that I could actually feel the blood running down my feet. I ran from my yard to my mamo's next door only to find there was no one there either. By this time, I was very afraid and confused. I ran back out to the street. I looked down the street to the four-way where there was a street lamp. At the back of the circle of light from the lamp, I saw a figure standing there. It was huge, very tall. I say it because I do not know if it was male or female. All I know is that it was very tall. I dream in color so I noticed that it was wearing beige or off-white colored robes that were very long and it had shoulder-length dark hair. I remember thinking, thank God I'm not alone. I began to run toward the figure, but as I approached the front of the circle of light, it raised one hand and stopped me. It said, you are not alone, you never have been, and never will be. I told it that I wanted to go home, that I didn't want to be here. It said to me again, do not be afraid, you are not alone. The father says you still have much to do, and cannot return home yet. As I was objecting, it said again, not yet, and began to fade away. It seemed to have been sucked up by the street lamp. After it faded away, I awoke in the intensive care unit. Watch this near-death experience next about a man who asked Jesus about aliens and the Big Bang.